If you have your Bibles with you this morning, please turn with me to the Word of the Lord, my friends, found in the book of James. And happy Palm Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday to you as well. In the book of James, chapter 4. James, chapter 4, and beginning at verse number 7. James, chapter 4, and beginning at verse number 7. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye devil-minded. We'd like to also send the program out to Mr. Donald Burton, Mrs. Mrs. Anisha Burton, Mrs. Ebony Robinson, Miss Donya Burton. We thank God for you here today. We'd also like to send the program out to Mr. Ryan Trahan. Thank God for you in the name of Jesus. We're dedicating the program to you all out there today. James chapter 4 and verse number 7. I'd like to talk to you today for a few minutes here, my friends. A devil-minded person. A devil-minded person or a devil-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. A person uh, that has this particular lifestyle or this particular way of living, uh, the enemy has him in his clutches. And the enemy does not want to allow that person to turn loose for the blessings of God. So the Bible says, submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist, turn away, flee from the devil, and the devil will flee from you. But we find here, amen, that some people begin to think about God, and then the enemy gets into their mind and begin to draw them away from the things of Almighty God. So the Bible says that a devil-minded man is unstable. There's no stability. There's no stabilism uh, in that particular lifestyle. When one minute you're thinking one way and the next minute you're thinking another way, that is a devil-minded individual. One minute you're in God and the next minute you're out of God. One minute you're praising God and the next minute the enemy has you captivated within your mind with something of the flesh. See, our flesh lures us away from the things of God. Mm -hmm. we, we find here that the enemy would uh, have you lured away from the things of God by a shiny car, by a brand new home, by a brand new girlfriend or a brand new boyfriend or something of that nature. The enemy is pulling you away from the things of God. So a devil-minded enemy, you got to think one way. You can't have one, you can't have uh, multiple opinions in your mind as to who God really is. There are people out there today that have served God and have even preached and have even uh, grown large congregations and the enemy still uh, infiltrates within their minds and causes them to say that God is not real. But I'm here to tell you, my friend, that when you stand on this word and you take a, a stand against the works of the enemy, against the works of sin, my friend, uh huh, against the works of sin, S I N, against the works of sin, and come out of it in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that a devil minded man, person, individual, doesn't make a difference, man, woman, is unstable. There's no stability within that individual. One minute they're thinking one way, and the next minute they're thinking another way. One minute they're in God, and the next minute they're out of God. One minute they love God, and the next minute they don't know whether they hate God or whether they hate themselves. My friend, the enemy has captivated the minds of multiple thousands of people in our society on today to make them think that God is not real. Look here at the word of God, my friends. The Bible says, submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Mm -hmm. Resist him. Turn away. Uh -huh. Don't allow that enemy to get inside of you and to make you think God is a good God. And he's worthy to be praised. And he's worthy to be magnified. And he's worthy to be lifted up. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, that I will draw all men unto me. We serve a God that's got all power in his hand. He's a good God. We serve a mighty good God here today. 
a God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we may even ask or think. But my friend, there are those of us out there where the individual uh -huh, has been manipulated by the devil. Uh huh. And now they are thinking that I'm, ty I'm tired of church. I'm tired of magnifying God. I'm tired of saying where there are two or three gathered together. See, that's all that's in the number now is two or three. But I would rather be in the two or three gathered together in my Namoshaya, in my name. Hallelujah. I would rather stay focused on the word of God than to be manipulated pulled out uh -huh, by the works of the enemy. See, my friend, there are those that the enemy has lured out of the house of God. There are those that the enemy has manipulated them out of the things of God. There are those that are tired of saying where there are two or three gathered together in my name. The Bible says, there am I in the midst of them. Mm -hmm. But we are tired of saying two or three. But my friend, I would rather be around the two or three that are sanctified. I would rather be around the two or three that are trying to give God the praise. They're trying to magnify God. They're trying to lift him up. Look here at the word of God in James 4 and 17. The Bible says, therefore to him that knows with her to do good and do it did not to him it is sin there are those of, of, of us out there we know to do good we know to magnify God we know to give God the praise we know to glorify him but see my friend our mind has become manipulated by the devil and now we don't go to Sunday school no more we don't go to choir rehearsal any longer we don't go to Bible class no more our lives are so busy that we are out of the church we are halfway in and halfway out. We are straddling the fence. But my God, my friend, when we find a people that's willing to turn aside every weight and every sin that so easily beset us and run this race with patience and begin to magnify God. See, when you get together and you begin to lift up the name of Jesus and you begin to call on the power of the Lord. Hallelujah. You will feel much better by magnifying God. So you can run the devil off. Hallelujah. By lifting up the name of Jesus. And by calling on the name that's above every name. Look here at the word of God, my friend. The Bible says, draw nigh to God. And he will draw nigh unto you. If you pull on the things of God. Begin to pull on the power of the Lord. See, I was, I was talking to an individual one time, and they said I, they said they, that they had been sick. Mm -hmm. And I had been sick before too, my friends. And I had to pull on the power of God. Hallelujah. I had to pull on the source of God. I said, God, I know that you are real. I know that you got all power. I know that you're able to do exceedingly, abundantly. See, I had to begin to speak the words of faith out of my mouth. See, there are times in our lives, my friend, when we're going to be tested by the things of the ways of the world. And we're going to begin to say, Lord, I'm standing. That's those that are born again. Those that are blood washed. Those that are willing to take a stand for the word of God. Mm -hmm. That those that are willing uh, to fight the good fight of faith. Uh, see, sometimes uh, the enemy uh, gets inside of people uh, and begins to tell them, uh, stop serving God. 
Stop magnifying him. You don't have to do that no more. You don't have to do that any longer. See, there the, the enemy is saying, stop praising God. Stop worshiping him. But my friend, when you stop praising God, when you stop magnifying God, when you stop lifting up the name of Jesus, when you stop drawing unto God and begin to draw unto your own mind, the Bible says that a devil-minded man, he's wishy-washy, he's unstable, he's in today and out tomorrow. I've seen so many people one minute they're praising God, and the next minute they don't even know how to get a praise in any longer. One minute they're preaching, and the next minute they don't even know why they even started preaching. My friend, when you start preaching, and you start preaching this word, this ain't no part-time thing. This is for life. Mm -hmm. This ain't no retirement. Hallelujah. This is elevation. Glory be to God. My friend, I'm here to tell you that the enemy don't want you to serve God. The enemy wants you to have a double-minded man, a double-minded mind, or even a double-minded man. He want to put you around people that say, well, it don't take all of that. Speaking in tongues huh, and calling on the name of Jesus huh, and carrying out the altar. Huh. It don't take all that. Huh. Kneeling before God, huh, worshiping God, huh, clapping. It don't take all that. Huh. But my friend, huh, I'm here to tell you huh, that it takes that and more. Huh. Mm -hmm, huh. It takes that and more. Huh. It takes that, my friend, huh, calling on the name of Jesus. Huh. How do you see some folk huh, when they called on Jesus huh, and they got to see what they did was? When they got delivered from the thing that had them bound, when they got delivered from that spirit of the enemy, that spirit of witchcraft that had them hoodooed, when they got free from that, then they stopped calling on Jesus. When they got free from that, they stopped magnifying God. My friend, I'm here to tell you that when you get free from the devil, glory be to God, you got to keep going. You you got to keep telling that devil, huh? devil, huh? you can't have my mind. Huh? See, the devil, he does not just want your body. Huh? He does not just want your walk. Huh? He wants every part of your life. Huh? He wants your body huh? captivated by the works of the enemy. Huh? He, wants to, he wants to lure you in huh? like a Venus fly trap. Huh? He wants to lure you into the middle huh, of that particular source of life. Huh? Mm -hmm. He don't want you to give God the praise. Huh? He don't want you to magnify God. Huh? He don't want you to lift up the name of Jesus. Huh? See, there, there, see, there are some people out there huh, saying it don't take all of that huh? giving God the praise huh? every time you turn around huh? it don't take all that huh? going to church on Sunday morning huh? going to church on Sunday evening huh? going to Wednesday night Bible class huh? it don't take all that huh? going to the Bible huh? it don't take all that huh? but my friend huh? if the juke joint was open it, it, maybe it is huh? if the juke joint is open huh? Monday through Saturday huh? they are there huh? they are there Mm -hmm. They are there. But my friend, when the doors of the church are opening, mm -hmm. and God is saying, come in and give me the praise, they're not there. No, you're not there. My friend, I'm here to tell you the word of God says, uh -huh. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth is not, the Bible says that that's sin. Mm -hmm. So whenever you find yourself near the house of God, wherever you find yourself near the house of the Lord, you ought to come on in and give God some praise. You ought to make yourself a very Available for the things of God. Mm -hmm. See the availability today that people have within their lives. They're available when it comes to the juke joint, when it comes to the discotheque, when it comes to the club. They're available, but when it comes time for Jesus and giving God the praise, we don't take our children to church no more. We just drop them off on Sunday morning at Sunday school, like it's a daycare center. The devil is a liar. My friend, you ought to make your way with your children in the house of God today. 
And let your children see you praising God. Let your children, we learn by example. Yes, sir. My mother was a was a church going person. My father died young age. I didn't see him go to church much because he was always working half the time. But my mother was a church going mother. She was a church going lady. She went to church every chance she got. When the doors of the church was open, she was there. And she was grabbing us by the ear and pulling us in. My friend, I'm here to tell you, we are led by the examples that we carry in our lives. So you ought to be there with your children, worshiping God. You ought to be there with your children, magnifying God. I know they get to an age of accountability and they begin to do their own thing. But my friend, the Bible says, train, train. Hallelujah. Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he shall not depart from it. So you got to begin to say, I'm not going to live in sin. I'm not going to live as a devil-minded individual. Up one day and down the next. In one day and out the next time. Mm -hmm. That's called wishy washy. That's called flaky. And there are many out there today that the enemy is trying to manipulate your mind and cause you to allow the devil to come in. That's the reason why, my friend, you don't need to, don't let nobody hypnotize you. Don't let nobody put you under hypnosis and make you think that you're going to get well. Make you think that, uh, that you're going to be free from this particular pain because you've been hypnotized. My friend, the devil, he is a liar. Look here at the word of God. My time is coming to end, but look here at the word of God, my friend. The Bible says draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye devil minded. James was talking to the people and he was telling them to come, come on. Come on out of this particular situation and cleanse your life. Allow your life to be a shining example in these last and in these evil days and begin to call on the name of Jesus while the blood is running warm in your veins. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, to there are those out there that know to do right. You know to do right, but the enemy is getting into your mind and he's telling you it don't take all of that to serve God. It don't take all of that to worship God. It don't take all of that to praise God. But my friend, I'm here to tell you that when the enemy comes on your life and he begins to pull at your life, you better have a source of God that's willing to fight for you. And I'm here to tell you that when you got God on your side, Hallelujah. When you got the power of the Lord on your side, the enemy, he has to flee. And he will flee because of the authority that we have in God. A devil-minded person is unstable, wishy-washy, flaky. Mm-hmm. My friend, one minute you're prophesying, and the next minute we can't get a prophet out of you. One minute you're preaching, and the next minute we can't get you to come up to the pulpit no longer. My friend, the devil, he is a liar. You better stop playing with God and come on and allow the power of the Lord to get inside of you. There are people out there that need to be shown up saved. You need to be saved today. You need to call on the name of Jesus. You said, Ellen McCray, you're talking like you're a perfect man. No, my friend, there's no one that's perfect. The one that's perfect, he gone. But he's coming back again. And you better be ready. Hallelujah. For the coming of the Lord. I'm talking about a coming of Jesus, my friend, that God is coming sooner than we can imagine or that we can even think. A devil-minded individual is unstable in all of his ways, wishy-washy, flaky, up one day and down the next, in one day and out the next. Mm-hmm. My friend, the enemy does not want you to give God the praise. The devil does not want you 
to magnify the Lord. The devil does not want you to press in to the things of God. It's time to press in to the things of the Lord and begin to say, Lord, he is my mind. My mind belongs to God. My mind is stable. My mind ain't wishy-washy. My mind is stable on the things of Almighty God. My friend, my time is coming on. But until next time, a devil-minded person is unstable in all of his ways. May the Lord bless you and heaven smile upon you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.